Cold cases are occasionally solved, sometimes with the use of forensic evidence and sometimes by simply revisiting previously examined clues. Someone may be more forthcoming with information, or a witness or suspect may decide to talk after some time has elapsed. Although attending a trial or hearing can be emotionally taxing, it can help families finally put the past behind them. While some gain total closure, see the murderer of their loved one and gain justice, some are able to know at least the names of the killer, and some families of nameless victims can know how their loved ones died without know who killed them. In this video, we will be talking about the top five unsolved cold cases in history. But before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. The Zodiac Killer In the late 1960s, a serial killer with the alias Zodiac Killer terrorized Northern California. It's been said that this is the most well-known murder mystery mystery that has never been solved in the United States. It became ingrained in the collective consciousness and fueled the efforts of amateur sleuths everywhere. Between December 1968 and October 1969, the Zodiac murdered five people in the San Francisco Bay Area, including in rural, urban, and suburban areas. A young couple and a lone cab driver were among his victims. Benicia, Vallejo, unincorporated Napa County, and San Francisco were all hit by his raids. Only two of his injured victims made it. The Zodiac said they killed 37 people, several more cold cases, some in Southern California, and some not have been connected to it. This term was coined by the Zodiac when he sent a series of threatening letters and cards to local media, threatening killing sprees and bombs if his letters and cards were not published. In a few of the letters written in cipher, the murderer claimed to be amassing enslaved people from his victims to use in the afterlife. Only what he created was deciphered by the year 2020, while two of them are still unsolved. Several hypotheses have been put up as to the killer's identity. However, the only person publicly identified by authorities was Arthur Lee Allen, a former elementary school teacher and convicted sex offender who passed away in 1992. Unfortunately, we haven't yet solved the case based solely on the letters and deciphered ciphers. There have been numerous leads explored, but no one has ever been positively identified as the Zodiac Killer. We don't even know for sure how many individuals he killed, especially when we consider the ideas that placed the killer's activity before 1968 and well into the 80s. The Black Dahlia a Los Angeles mother out walking with her toddler on January 15, 1947, came across the body of a young woman who had been sliced in two at the waist. The body was apparently just a few steps from the pavement, arranged such that the mother initially mistook it for a mannequin. There was not a single drop of blood at the site, despite the fact that the young woman's body had been severely mutilated and hacked. LAPD oversaw the subsequent inquiry. The FBI was called in, and it took only 56 minutes for them to identify the body using the fingerprints they received from Los Angeles via Sound Photo, an early fax machine used by news agencies. As it turned out, the young woman was 22-year-old Hollywood hopeful Elizabeth Short, who was later called the Black Dahlia by the media due to rumors that she favored wearing skin-tight black clothing in reference to the popular Blue Dahlia film at the time. In the FBI's extensive database, Short's fingerprints showed up twice, more than 100 million were on file at the time. In January of 1943, she had initially applied for a position as a clerk at the Camp Cook Army Commissary in California. Second, seven months later, she was caught by Santa Barbara authorities for underage drinking. The FBI also made available to the media a mug photo of the suspect. The FBI assisted the Los Angeles Police Department by conducting nationwide record checks and interviews with potential suspects. Agents were also requested to look into a group of students at the University of Southern California Medical School on the basis of initial suspicions that the murderer may have had expertise in dissection due to the body's neat cutting. A set of fingerprints were discovered on an anonymous letter that may have been delivered to authorities by the killer. However, the FBI was unable to find a match using its database. The Disappearance of Eitan Patz on May 25, 1979, six-year-old American kid Etan Khalil Patz vanished from the Soho area of Lower Manhattan on his way to the bus stop. His disappearance sparked a campaign that resulted in new laws and improved techniques for locating missing children. 
Pats was one watcher on a milk carton campaigns of the early 1980s, several years after he went missing. In 1983, on the 25th anniversary of Eaton's disappearance, President Ronald Reagan proclaimed May 25th as National Missing Children's Day in the United States. Eaton's teacher at school was aware of his absence but did not notify administration. Julie contacted the authorities after her son Etan did not come home from school. The Potzes were initially investigated as suspects, but it was swiftly proven that they were not involved. That night, about a hundred police officers and a pack of bloodhounds began a massive search. For weeks, people kept looking. The police and residents of the area put up missing child posters with a picture of Eaton all over town, but they received no leads. In 1985, Eaton's prime suspect was revealed to be Jose Antonio Ramos, a convicted child sexual abuser who were friends with his former babysitters. Nonetheless, Ramos was never found guilty due to a lack of evidence. Patz's case went cold for a while until it was revived in 2010. Yet nothing new emerged until Pedro Hernandez made his confession in 2012. Second-degree murder charges were dropped against Hernandez after his attorneys said he had the mental capacity to understand the gravity of the situation and suffered from a personality condition that prevented him from distinguishing between truth and imagination. After a 2015 mistrial, Hernandez was found guilty in 2017 and given a sentence of life in prison with the chance of parole after at least 25 years. The Murder of Wendy Jo Hallison Wendy Jo Hallison, a 22-year-old art student, vanished in 1968 from a thrifty drugstore on the junction of Wilshire Boulevard and Fairfax Avenue, and her family has been trying to find out what happened to her ever since. When a killer serving a life sentence in an Ohio prison died in 2013, Janine, genetic evidence provided the family with answers in 2016. Benson claimed that the case was under investigation for a long time by detectives from the Wilshire Division. They reasoned that Hallison's murderer must have been one of the men in his life. She was in a committed relationship at the time, and she stayed friendly with her ex-boyfriend. The murder of Hallison by strangulation was so targeted that investigators concluded the killer knew the victim and harbored a vendetta against him. However, no charges were brought since the evidence was never conclusive. The Robbery Homicide Division reopened the investigation years after it had gone cold. The evidence was re-examined in 2009 after significant advances had been made in DNA analysis. Although the results were inconclusive, they did help rule out some of the prime suspects. Benson, who collaborated on the case with reserve officer and retired deputy district attorney Peter Berman, stated that authorities were hopeful that technology would, would improve to the point where Hallison's killer might be identified. Another round of testing was done last year, and it was determined that the evidence pointed to Edwin Dean Richardson, a convicted thief, murderer, and another criminal. Authorities said Richardson was a vagrant who committed a murder in Ohio in 1977. He was 77 years old when he passed away in prison in 2013. Benson claims that Richardson killed Hallison while he was in the vicinity. According to the detective, the suspect's mother resides in the Mid-City neighborhood, also, Richardson matched the description of a white man who was spotted in the store at the same time as Hallison. The murder of Maria Ridolf, 1957. Maria Ridolf, age seven at the time, vanished from a nearby street corner on December 3, 1957. After about five months, her body was discovered around 100 miles from her Sycamore, Illinois residence. Numerous possibilities were explored, but no one stood out as the prime suspect. The murder of Ridolf went unsolved and is now considered a cold case. Then, in 2008, a development in the cold case of Maria Ridolf grabbed international news. In 2012, the case of Maria Ridolf's murder was thought to be solved with the conviction of Jack McCullough, then known as John Tessier. But the decades-old tragedy kept turning. It turned out that McCullough had been wrongfully incarcerated for a crime he hadn't committed. In 2016, McCullough's charges were dropped, and he was released from prison. And now that we know Jack McCulloch wasn't guilty, the murder investigation into Maria Rodolph can resume. This is the end of this video. For more videos on cold cases, give this video a like and subscribe to this